Mark Leusing has developed an XPages control called XPage Debug Toolbar. The control supports various functionality, most importantly it allows XPages developers to use print statements in their server-side code that show up in, in, in a web browser window. So here's how it works. Um, the project comes with a simple test application. You can find the toolbar here at the top. You can expand it and collapse it. Uh, you can also remove it completely. And what I want to do first is show how to um, initiate some messages and where they show up. So when I open this messages tab, you find the um, messages that have already been printed out. Um, and for the purpose of this demo, I want to show the same messages here in another window. So I open it and reduce this one. And now I can click these buttons here at info message, um, at error message, and at error, at warning message. And the messages show up here in my second window, dependent on the type, different colors are used, and the messages are refreshed every five seconds. Or you can initiate a refresh manually, and you can also um, use different filters here. So now let's go in Designer and take a look how to use or how to initiate um, these statements. Now, um, first of all, there is um, the CC debug toolbar custom control that needs to be embedded. And then um, functions like error, warning, info um, on this object dbar can be called. And the same functionality is available in server-side Java code. Um, so here you need to import, you first need to import this um, debug toolbar class. And that class or object has the same methods as the server-side um, code that you just saw. So info and arrow, etc. Now in addition to that, um, you can also dump objects or values of objects. Now in this case, we um, dump the session scope and here is an example of an array. Now going back to the um, window real quick, um, these were the messages that I just initiated from my other browser window. And here you see the output of the array dump and here's the output of the dumped session scope object. Now in addition to that, there are some other functionality. So let's expand this again. Um, there is the notion of timers. And here you can see that this set of functionality that was um, called adding scope messages took um, 401 milliseconds. Now um, the way you invoke or use this timer here uh, is uh, can be um, demonstrated here with this server-side script library. Um, first you call the method start timer and give it a name or ID and then certain things happen here and at the end um, you call stop timer and using the same ID again. So that's how you use the timers and then in addition to that um, Mark has also used code and, and ideas from other projects, open NTF projects. Um, for example, Ferry Kranburg had in his debug control um, the ability to basically dump the um, values of these different objects, application scope, session scope, view scope, and request scope. So that same functionality is available here. And Tommy Weiland has um, contributed another project in OpenNTF that is called API Inspector. Um, what that one allows you to do is to pick one of the components on this page. Let's say we pick the first button and then it returns the underlying Java class that is used for this UI control. In this case the button has the Java class XSP command button and now you can directly from here open up all the methods and fields etc. or you can open up the documentation of the Java class directly from here. Now what that allows you to do is to find out what methods are available um, um, on that particular class. And what I want to do now is to say um, set disabled, here it is, set disabled and then I, I um, set the state to true or to disabled. Now the way I would do that is you know, basically copy and paste this code, get component button 1 and then I go in designer and 
add the following code here, get component button one, and set disabled is the function that, um, that we just found. So when I save it and go back, and then I do a refresh of this page, and I need to minimize this one here, um, you can see that the button is now disabled, um, which I just did using Java code um, from my server-side JavaScript.